I truly believe when going on a vacation that it should be a series of epic events that will define that trip or vacation. So if you come down to Sadek, you know, what is there really to do? I mean, it's the countryside. I mean, I could teach you how to uh, till the rice fields with water buffalo, or if you want to bend over and cut rice or thrash it, we could try to do that. But honestly, I guess that's kind of work as opposed to fun. You know what I'm saying, unless you like that kind of stuff. I mean, the villagers will be like, yeah, do my work for me, that's awesome. <laughs> so while you're doing their work for them, they're gonna sit on the, uh, you know, the rice bank drinking tea and judging your work and be like, hey, I love this. I, this is taking an hour off of my work job. I don't have to do. You know, the, uh, the city folk or the friends are like, dude, this is awesome. This is like so exotic. We get to plant rice, woohoo. So going to the water park is just going to be about pure joy. They're going to use their, their whole entire muscles, muscles that they never thought they were going to use. They're not going to feel the pain until two or three days later when they're just walking like robots. Ah, I'm not a robot, but I hear it. Please walk. And face here. So yes. Going to this water park will be an epic adventure for all of them. And that's why we go. Happy land. Oh yeah. Dude, I'll tell you, I've been to those expensive Disney parks and the Six Flags, Magic Mountain, and all those big parks that have the rides. And granted, those rides are awesome and cool. I mean, people wait in line all the time for that. When we come here to the countryside, they have like really simple rope games and whatnot, hanging and balancing. Costs not even a fraction of what those other parks have. And the looks on the people's faces and the joy they get out of the exercise. It seems like they actually physically do more than they would at the other Western parks where you just walk and walk and walk and then you come to a attraction and you walk and walk and then you eat food and get fat. Then you walk and walk and walk. Here it's just about you go a couple steps, you're on a different apparatus, splash, and you gotta swim to the side, blah, blah, blah. So they're just constantly moving. It's kind of cool. And trust me, they will feel it. You're like, dude, you look like you just got off a horse. You look all stiff and stuff. He's like, I can't move. Just... <sighs> anyway, water park, fine. Yeah, she's good. But she's gonna get tired. I'm waiting for her to get tired. She'll fall. They all fall in the end. So check it, me and water are like in love. Well, actually I love water. Round one, fight! Final round, fight!
không chơi chơi hay chơi bút chết luôn I grew up in California, but then always going to Hawaii, so I would go swimming when I was young. I would go to uh, Hana Bay, and the waves sometimes got big where they had nice curls where you could actually like body surf them, but in general, they were just like real. <laughs> but the thing about when like my mom had to swim there is to crawl up to the bathroom to take a shower and then put on our braces and all that was hella far. So crawling on the sand was hella far. So I didn't like that. And always Hana Bay, is, there's like nobody there. But I always wanted to go to Homoa, to Homoa Beach. That was where the clubhouse was, so they actually had good food. But then crawling up the beach was like maybe 200 feet, wasn't long at all. And so it was easy to get up to the shower, rinse off the sand, and then get dressed, go on braces, walk out with crutches. So the thing is, I was like that. And then in general, like when storms come in, the waves get real big. And that's when, you know, body surfing is just fun. But sometimes it's so big that I, because uh, you know, I, I can't uh, stand, but so I, I stay on the ground and I grip the sand to fight the, the current and stuff like that. And then um, when it's coming in, so I plant myself and just like push against it, the wave will go past me. And when the wave goes out, then I just straight up full on use that to move me fast. You know, I flatten out and I just sort of skim so I can get out to the break faster. But sometimes when it's, the waves are hella big and like crashy and whatnot. I get caught in the whitewash and all that. And just yeah, it, sometimes it's a, it's rough getting out, but once you get out past the break, it's you know you can chill pretty much because you can either um, go over the wave or go under it, so it's easy. So I used to like body surf, you know, eight hours a day and stuff like that. I love that stuff. So water and me, we're just like I feel water to a certain degree is. Uh, an equalizer because like even in my family you know I may look tubby and big but I, I'm a really good swimmer and I can swim long distances no problem. <laughs> The secret is me floating on my back and just relaxing with my big belly as a floater. It's awesome. But knowing that this water park has all these uh, apparatuses and stuff like that, there is no way that I can do any of them or would try just because of the logistics. I mean, crawling up the ladders, trying to get people to help, crawling everywhere, trying to get, I mean, it just, dude, are you kidding me? Ah, uh, my jewels. <laughs> and then even when you fall in, to even get out of that pit, out of that pool, they just have a ladder, so it's really difficult. So like logistically, even though I brought all my friends and stuff like that here, it's a place that I can't fully enjoy, but I get the enjoyment about them having that much fun, kind of releasing all the cares in their life and just focusing on the moment, using all their energy, failing and laughing. It's awesome. My joy comes vicariously through watching them have that much fun. My mom has done this, what now, seven, eight times? So she is the master chef. She commands all the minions. She knows what to get, what to buy, what to make. So this is actually a celebration of her food. So this is goi dao heo, or English translation, salad using the meat from the pig head. It looks like spam, but doesn't taste like spam. But it is kind of spam. Yeah, it's good. This dish is banhoi hei wai basically a vermicelli noodle with 
rotisserie pig. Everyone loves pig. So this is cooking lagu. It has pork meat and vegetables stewed together. So this is like a pork stew. Who doesn't love a pork stew? Delish. This is balsao kowa. It's beef with bitter melon, onions, and butter. The beef is actually really good. It's nice, it comes out nice and soft. Bitter melon, not so much. You cook it at the table, so it's nice and hot. That's what makes it delicious. I really want to meet that fish that has balls these big. This beautiful plate of shrimp, squid, mushroom, melon flour is actually for a dish, a lao, which is seafood hot pot. But you know, we're hella far from the sea, so it makes sense. All the men are out in front, kind of like pushing the women, tell them to start the party. But I'm like, we have some guests and I got some friends coming from Saigon. If I start the party with you now, when they get here, you guys will all have gone home and there'd be like no party. It's like, thanks, we're gonna have a really large lunch. We're gonna have a party with my friend. I mean, just my, with my friends. Where, where's your family to eat? Oh yeah, they went home already. They had to feed the water buffalo or something, you know, till the fields or uh, pick up their daughter from class, I don't know. You know, you always have to pay respects to the elders. You have to convince them that you're still a good boy. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to do was not make this party like totally huge. I wanted it to be about family and friends, like the immediate families, people that matter, that you see every from time to time. And so when some of my boys from Saigon showed up, it just made that much more memorable. And I'd like to thank Dave Lemke, Lewis. Blacker, little Mikey, been loud, silly guy. Awesome having you here. I know you're gonna love the food. Trust me, countryside baby. What up, Stone Stone? Big producer man. What up? I'm ready for your stone face defense with the two chop. What up, Big Jonah? Nice to meet you. Now this has become an epic party. Hey, Blacker, get your dirty pals off the food. <laughs> and now to the main event, the main party, the 30th anniversary. This is actually to the day, 30 years of oh, the party. Hey, 30 year anniversary. 29th of July, 1993 to 2023. Compared to previous parties, this was actually quite quaint, very enjoyable. It wasn't too crazy. Comparison to the parties in the past, it's been like twice as many people and it's just been straight up chaotic. So actually I could have an intelligent conversation and enjoy the food, which that's why we're here for. <laughs> you know, with every relationship, it's, we've had our goods and bad. You know, it hasn't been an easy road walking that fine line between Western culture and the Vietnamese culture and how the thinking is. And, you know, I've, I've definitely stumbled my way through things. You know, we're here now, 30 years later, I think we're doing okay. My relationship with my mom is strong. I always love her. Keep this dance going, it's awesome. I guess you can call me kind of the wild child in that I do everything unconventionally in the Vietnamese standards. You know, how I live, how I design, how I, I do things. But in the end, it's actually mom, man, that is the glue that holds the family together. You know, if I need any help from my siblings, she is the liaison. This three-day, two-night, 30th anniversary, killing the big water park, traveling to Sedex, sleeping on the floor, eating intestines, meeting friends, drinking a lot, parting our faces off with friends and family has been a whirlwind. It's been awesome, tiring. But I do it all over again, I would do it 10 times more. I loved it, every minute. And I was honored by everybody who showed up, friends, family, brothers and sisters, baby chomp teeny. Special day with me and my mother. It's been 30 days. 30 years. 30 years since I found her. And we're hoping for 30 more. And uh, for my mother to always be here.
Hi guys, this is Tui from Tui Co. Uh, you can see I've been using my diamond grinder to grind this new piece. It is a tobacco ashtray uh, that we did in the can. We just had CNC on the bronze. Right now I'm prepping it for molding and cutting these tabs that were left over from the, uh, from the CNC. I'm grinding down the, the edges and I'll be smoothing these out because it's really sharp right now. Uh, this is an ashtray that will be a future product. And it will down like this and it's for like three or four different of art. So you can use it. I wanted to make it sort of an object of the art so that if it's on the table and they don't see ash, maybe they see it as a beautiful leaf or piece of art. If you enjoyed the video, Please like, share, follow, and subscribe.